senior Android developer at the nerdery, at least for the next two and a half weeks. Um, and then I'm going to be shifting over to Target, working on their cartwheel application. And I am here to talk about data binding in Android. Um, the first thing that I want to mention about data binding is that it's one of the many new exciting things that Google announced in I.O. not long ago. Um, and of course they announced it alongside Android M. But you don't actually need Android M to do this. Uh, you don't even need the latest SDK necessarily. Um, it's all run through a Gradle plugin, so as long as you use that Gradle plugin, everything will work on older versions too. So this is not exclusive to the stuff you're working on in 10 years. So one of the, my least favorite job interview questions when talking about Android is, how does an Android activity or a fragment fit into the MVC pattern? My answer is always, because honestly they don't. The way that we use activities and fragments, we do way more than just a modeler view or a controller of the activity. You know, we find our views, we uh, set them to be visible or invisible, we set the colors of things, we do all sorts of crazy things in our activities. That means that they don't really fit into either the view or the controller, they kind of do both. Um, but MVC is a great pattern, so we're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, there are actually a couple of varieties of it, of course. There's MVC, which you have a controller, there's MVP, where you have a presenter, you have an MVVM, where there's a view model. Basically, it all boils down to these three things. You have a model that uh, it represents just your raw data, these are your playable Java objects. You've got basically just how the data is structured, how it uh, is stored in your database, or how it comes from an API. Nothing too special there. They don't care about how they're going to be displayed or where they come from, really. Uh, you've got your view that indicates how that data is displayed. So, of course, in Android, this is our layout XML. Um, that doesn't care what data is coming in. Well, it cares a little bit about what data is coming in, but it doesn't care about where it's coming from or how you're getting that data, just that it has data. Then you just have something that kind of coordinates that getting the data and then giving it to the viewer to actually display. Um, so of course, uh, like I said, activities and fragments, what the answer they're usually looking for is either the controller or kind of maybe they're looking for that name, we don't really know. Um, but thanks to data binding, we can actually start making our views, or our activities and our fragments um, more purposeful and more single purposed. So this is actually an example from a JavaScript templating engine called Handlebars. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because templating and data binding is used everywhere in the web. And I think it's a great kind of simple example. Uh, even if you don't know HTML, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, we just have a little block where we're going to put our title. And we have a little block where we're going to put our body. Now, of course, if you actually go to the web, you would never actually see these little curly <coughs> brackets and this little funny notation in the website itself. Um, most of the time, I did run into a bug with the website that showed these the other day. Um, what happens though is in our controller, um, we use handlebars to compile that template. We just create this simple JSON object that has a title and body, and then we just say, hey template, here's your data. And then all the magic of populating those fields happens behind the scenes, and you don't have to worry about finding those, uh, those header tags, you don't have to worry about finding the body tags or anything else. The view just takes care of putting it where it belongs. So, like I said, now that we have data binding, we can do this and we can have better separation of concerns within our activities and our fragments. Um, our activities and fragments can now be single purpose to load our data, bind that data to the view, and then maybe respond to some events like clicks or um, new data being loaded. So, to get started, all I have to do is add the data binding plugin to your class path in your build script, um, and then apply the plugin. Uh, you might apply that after the Android plugin. This is all you have to do. There's no separate library. Um, it does include a library, but you don't have to spec specify that you want to compile that library as well. So then, in our views, we just take our existing layout and we wrap everything in this layout tag. And what's going to happen then is the data binder can then bind to that layout tag and say, oh, this is going to be a layout that we're going to bind to later. And then, we add this little data tag. And inside of that data tag, we have a variable. And what we're doing here is we're just saying that we're going to have this animal model and we're going to call that animal inside our template. So now we essentially have an instance of this animal object that we can use elsewhere in our layout. To use it, we use, again, kind of a little homey syntax, but we use an at sign with curly braces and then we can call things like animal.species or if the animal has a name property, we can say animal.name um, or all sorts of other cool stuff. And we just put that into our existing Android text attribute. You can do that with almost any attribute. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. And then the final thing that happens is once you actually compile, the data binder will find that layout. It'll say, hey, this is going to be something that's going to be used in data binding. Uh, it's got this animal. Uh, so we're going to compile a binding class. And what that binding class is, is essentially a Java representation of your view. 
So uh, the class that it generates takes the name of your layout XML and then converts it to upper camelcase and then add bindings to the end. So if you have my fancy layout, you then have my fancy layout binding. So if you actually want to use this, uh, this is an example inside of an activity. Um, instead of calling set content view like you usually would, um, the plugin provides this convenience class in the data binding rule that um, gives you a set content view that in addition to setting the view on the activity itself will also generate that binding at the same time. And so for our activity animal layout XML, we get this activity animal binding. And then because we said that our uh, layout has a single variable called animal, the binder will also generate this method called set animal and just pass whatever kind of animal we want in there and then all of our layout will automatically bind to all the properties inside of that animal. So, let's see a demo of how this actually works. This demo is a pretty basic uh, note app. You can't actually take notes in it. <laughs> I tell you what the notes are, and then it'll just display them in a pretty simple list. Um, but, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's, it's a good size. Cool, that worked. Um, so right now in my adapter, I don't actually have a whole lot going on. Uh, if I ran this right now, you'd actually have an empty list because I'm not actually binding any of the data in an on -bind view holder. Um, so we're gonna actually make this a little bit more exciting. Uh, we're going to go to our row layout first, and here we just have three text views that currently don't display anything and are not using data binding. So, we're going to fix that. So the first thing we have to do is wrap everything in this layout tag. Grab our namespace while we're at it. So now, we have our layout tag, everything's wrapped in that, and we can go ahead and add our data tag. And we're going to add one variable. We're going to call it a note. And the type is... So now we can use this note to bind any property of that note anywhere we want inside of our layout XML. So I'm going to show you guys what that note looks like. Uh, right now it's basically just a little job app that has a title string, a content string, and then a created time date, which just defaults to whatever I created this object. Um, one thing to note is that those strings are all private, and then I've got these public getters down here. When you bind to a property like title, first the data, uh, the data, data binding plugin will look for a public field with that name, and then if they can't find that, it'll look for a public method with that name, and they'll try to find that. If you don't have either of those, then it'll complain to compile time that can't bind to that. <coughs> so we are going to bind to all three of these things right now. Let's put our title here. <laughs> <laughs> that actually helps my screen a lot too, thank you. <laughs> put the contents of our note here. And then we will throw our date down here. Now we're actually going to run into one more problem, which I know this now. It actually compiled just fine. Um, actually, that's a lie. It would not compile. This would be a compile time error because you remember my, in my note class that created time is a date. If we go back to the if we go back to the row, I'm calling this on Android text. And what happens when the data binder tries to bind to Android text is, or when it tries to bind to anything really, is it looks for a setter uh, with that name, so set text in this case, and it looks for one that takes in this variable type. So my created time is the date, it looks for a set text with a date argument, and as we all know, that doesn't exist. So we complain that it can't create the binding class for this particular layout. Um, so I'm going to be lazy here, and I'm just going to call two string on this. And it's actually cool because it's another one of the neat features of the way that Google implemented this is you can essentially do anything you can do in Java within these bindings. Obviously, I wouldn't get too crazy, but you can do anything you want, like call two strings and things. All right. Um, then we have to go over to our adapter because I have not updated that yet. Um, the other, one of the other neat things that the data binding uh, plugin does is when it generates these bindings, it creates some convenience methods in there for inflating things. Um, so once you have your layout inflator, I can just call, actually, see if it is sweet. So my note row binding is the class I created because, again, my layout XML is called note row.xml. 
So I can create a binding. My cursor doesn't jump around. I know how to type Java. <laughs> From binding that thing, so we'll pass in our player. And then just like that data binding builds out set content view, this will automatically inflate my layout and it'll generate that binding at the same time, which is just kind of convenient. And then, because we're using a view holder, I'm gonna also be kind of lazy down here. We're just gonna add a binding here. And instead of passing the item view, passing that binding so we'll get to it later. And then um, all of our bindings, all of our binding classes have this get group method that just returns the root view of our layout. So if you ever need the root view or if you ever need to find other views inside of that bind, you can always just call get root to get that root view. So just pass that into our view holder super. And instead of passing in our row, just pass in our binding. All right, now we should be good. So let's cross our fingers and run it. I turned on all the Grail tricks. So this should go fast. Actually, this won't work. I lied. Because I never actually bound the data. <laughs> so, uh, down here, since my folder has the binding, we'll just get that binding, and we can say set note and pass in our note for that position. Now, if we run it, it should actually show something. Uh, one of the things that I thought about when I was uh, first playing around with data binding was um, wondering why my emulator was offline. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try closing this or anything. This actually went pretty quickly earlier, so I have confidence in it. Um, anyway, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was uh, first playing with data binding was that it was really cool to use the data binding libraries to uh, kind of bypass the adapter entirely. Because if you look at what I've got here, there's not a whole lot or really anything that's specific to this note list at all. It's all just kind of taking this binding class and then binding the correct types of data to it. And as it turns out, someone actually already did this. There's a uh, already a data binding uh, recycler view library that you can pull down. And instead of creating an adapter, all you have to do is inside your layer XML pass in a or bind to a list of things. So you could bind to a list of notes and specify what your note row layout looks like. And the, this particular library goes to the work of creating a uh, binding adapter for you. So it's one of the many cool things you can do with data binding. There you go, we have some beautiful notes. They're formatted beautifully thanks to fantastic after pat text appearances. And we've got pretty ugly date format, but we have our notes. So, can our views be any smarter? What else can we bind to? Excellent questions. <laughs> <laughs> First thing that we're going to try to bind to is visibility. Because, honestly, why should my activity care that I want my text view to be invisible if there's no content there, right? That's something the view should be able to handle. The view knows that if there's no content, it shouldn't display this text view. So we're trying to do this inside of our layouts too. First thing you have to do is, since we're going to be calling the view, uh, the view constants of vis visible and gone, we have to import that data type into our layout, just like you would in Java. Just, just magically know about all the things in your code. Um, and then step two is just binds to visibility. Um, so like I said, you can use pretty much anything you do in Java inside of your bindings. So in this case, we're using ternary operator to bind to either visible or gone based on whether or not the note content actually has anything there. And then we're going to take a little bit of a detour because our note view or our note uh, model is going to get a little bit too complex because I don't like that date format. It's ugly. But I don't want to put anything in my uh, po jokes that formats dates because that's just mixing concerns. And it's a little bit too much work for me in my layouts. Um, one of the things that came out when data binding source introduced was there was a guy who made an angry rant about how 
data mining is going to destroy Android because everyone's going to be doing all of their logic inside their views. And he has a point. We don't want to put everything in the view. Because that's just, it doesn't make sense. And you also don't get very great syntax highlighting. And you're going to inevitably run into some bugs that you don't want. So we're going to create a view model to encapsulate some of the logic of actually uh, generating the data that we want to bind to. So we go back to Android Studio. Actually, already have a note to view model. And right now, all we have here is we have, uh, I was lazy again, so I just wrapped uh, the note in the view model. Uh, and we got our title, our content, our created time, and then also added this timestamp format. And we have this formatted timestamp that's just going to format our time so it looks a little prettier. All right, so if we go back to our note to row. Change our created time to formatted timestamp. Get rid of that to string because now it's actually returning a string. We don't have to worry about that anymore, which is also another benefit. Um, and then our visibility. I know some of my content doesn't actually exist, so we are going to use that over here. And uh, another thing to note about this is that while it's in release camp status right now, and it's pretty good. There are a couple of little quirks here, um, especially in regards to how Studio handles um, some of the binding things. Um, I ran into some issues earlier today when I was running through this again, where I had to restart Studio just to get it to compile. Um, but uh, this is going to be one of the other weird things that you'll see in just a second. It just doesn't think that's a thing. Complaints are thrown there because it yeah it can't resolve the symbol whatever. So there are some weird quirks here and there. Um, it will still compile. You just have to know what you're doing. Um, and then, like I said, we also have something to import our view class here. View dot view. And then finally, because I changed, uh, oh, I didn't actually change that yet. Uh, because this is no longer a note, this is now my note view model. Change that here, and then fix that in our adapter as well. Now if we run this, we will have a much prettier view. It actually won't be that much prettier, but it'll be a little prettier. Sometimes I like presentation because it's beautiful, but sometimes it's hard to see what's actually going on. Ah, it appears as though Studio just decided to freeze. Mm. Oh yeah, it's really frozen. Okay, we are going to close Studio and try that again. This is this is how Studio gets you. Come on, but yes, I know it's not responding. I'm trying to fix that. There we go. All right.
Rio usually likes me more than this. I haven't had a freeze in a while. Or is this 1.3? This, this, this is 1.3. I am running the 1.3 preview because it has better support for data binding, um, syntax highlighting. So I'll just play it under the skin that says. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's try. By the way, if anyone hasn't used app and pass text appearances yet, I highly recommend them. They make beautiful text without too much work from you. If you go to the app and pass website, or if you go to the uh, material design website, they've got a list of all the different ones that you can use, and they're all beautiful. Tell your designers to start using them because it's easy to use them. I'm going to go back to my presentation why we let Studio think about all the things it is that are on. <laughs> and we will show that again in a second. Um, anyway, so we can actually make our views even cooler than what would have worked there if Studio hadn't been a bright teenager. <laughs> um, we can actually make the inviting go both ways, where we're not just updating the views, but the views are also telling us when to update. Um, before we do that, I want to mention that uh, we can use more than just the predefined attributes. So you can, before we're using Android text, which of course is an attribute that's already defined for text view, you can also bind to almost anything else. Like I said, when you do Android text, the data binder looks for a set text. Um, if you want to use one that isn't an already an attribute, so we know that um, all views have an onclick listener, we can just use our app namespace to bind to anything else. So in this case, app onclick listener will bind to a set onclick listener method. You can actually pass in more complex Java objects like a complete view onclick listener. Um, and then we can also make our data automatically update on the screen once it updates in the back end, once it has the the scenes. So we don't have to constantly be tell, uh, taking our views and telling them that things have changed. Um, our data binding will take care of that for us. And the way we do that is through observables, which I want to make clear are not RxJava observables. Google chose a pretty bad name for these um, because RxJava is the hotness and I'm hoping data binding will become hot and now people are going to be confused over the observable. Um, so now we're going to go back and try and demo again using these. Um, so if we go into our note view model, I'm going to actually create a field that keeps track of how many times we've clicked on any, any individual node. So I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to use a public field this time. I'm going to use an observable int. That is just going to be the number of clicks. And we also want a view on the listener. And because this is an actual init, I can't just increment it in here. Um, the observable um, in just has a get and a set. So I'm going to do a set. I'm going to do get and just. So once I bind to this, hopefully every time I click on my view, this num clicks will get incremented, then my um, view will automatically update to display that number of clicks. So I'm going to actually switch to presentation mode and all that up better. There we go. So I'll add a new text field for this, and we're going to add num clicks. And let's use some um, body two. That would be nice. All right. 
Is that all I have to do? Let's check my list. Yes, that is all I have to do. So if we run this now. Actually, that's a lot. I didn't actually find that necessary. And because I decided to run it in the studio, it was apparently going to freeze again. All right, we can fix this. Now I know, just don't run it. <laughs> I don't know if we want the emulator. Do you have the pre -builds? Uh No, I don't have the pre built ABK sitting around at home. Um, but I think if I just close the emulator and try that again, ah, I bet that's my problem. I bet it's the emulator that crashed. Go away, emulator. On a side note, I was using Jenny Motion, and then I broke it earlier today, so I wasn't going to use it here. So I'm just going to play myself for this. All right, I'll run the studio again. Um, while it's opening up, I'm going to take a little detour. Um, if you want to, you can actually see the binding class that's generated for yourself. It's not anything particularly special. Um, it is pretty much what you'd expect in your uh, recycler view folders, where it's just got a reference to all of your views, um, and then it's got some method stuff to do those accordingly. So if we go into our app, it's in the build folder, it's in intermediates. Uh, is that right? Yeah, intermediates. Classes, debug. And here is our binding class. Save some logic stuff in there. So, like I said, we just got references to all our views. Um, got a constructor that gets all those views set up. Um, and then it's got some methods that it uses internally for determining whether we need to completely update all of our views or not. And nothing else particularly special. Um, it does do some optimizations for you because it can, because you don't actually have your suits class. But I wanted to show that it's nothing particularly special. All right, let's try running this one more time. <coughs> I still did not do it. I told you I was going to do that. All right, so we're going to bind that clip. Listen, I did. Oh, this is my old one. Oh, I'll go with it. Sweet. Okay. Oh, I did find this not exist. I'm going to actually switch. Go into our note row. We're going to add in that last binding, and then we should be all set. So, app on book listener. And bind that to our notes book listener. All right. Import that app namespace. And we are good to go. Ah, I know exactly what it's complaining about. So I mentioned earlier that um, all of our set, or all the set methods that they might look for, are based on the type of data that you pass in. Um, so I actually never updated this anyway, but we're going to update this right now to use our numplex. And this would actually compile fine. Um, but the problem that's gonna, we're going to encounter is that this is an integer. So, as I'm sure someone in this room has found out before, if you try to pass an integer into a set text on Android, it'll actually work just fine. But your integer is probably not a screen resource ID, so it's going to crash at runtime because this is passing in however many times you clicked on it. And I'm guessing your screen resource ID is going to start with zero. So, we're going to be lazy. You're just going to pass string value of. Grab that. And that. And where did my. Oh, I see. It never actually. Go with this. You should, why are you still not working? Can I find getter fields for my listener? Why can't you find a listener? Nope. Where are you? Ah, because this did not save. That explains a lot. We will try this again. So we have our observable point. Um, <clears throat> then we have our Thank you, 
studio for freezing. Don't do that again. Set. Get plus one. All right. You saved it this time. I have confidence in this. There we go. All right. Now we're running out of the emulator. You have complaints of the emulator being too slow. I highly recommend turning on Intel Maximum Emulation. It'll go 100 times faster, and you won't even miss any motion when it breaks on you. <laughs> and for some reason, it always likes to open way over there, so we're going to fix that. In the meantime, another interesting thing to note is that Butter Knife is actually expanding its uh, kind of scope of what the library does. Um, Jake Wharton, being Jake Wharton, absolutely hates uh, Google's implementation of data binding. Uh, so Butter Knife is now actually going to compete directly with the Google data binding plugin uh, and try to do some data binding for you there. Um, if you've seen anything from the 7.0 release, uh, you've seen some of this already uh, with the, the bind method that Butter Knife now offers. Um, I personally, and not a big fan of it, but if you're like Jake Wharton and you're curmudgeonly and hate everything Google does, then you might like it too. <laughs> All right, so now we have our notes. Um, you'll see that this one doesn't actually have a content, or they all actually have content, I didn't switch to the content ones. Um, anyway, so now we have our number of clicks down there, everyone's zero right now, click on it. It'll crash because I just unscrewed it apparently. Well, it should have worked. Um, Yes, uh, I even wrote a note to myself to not do this again because I did this the last time I gave this presentation. Um, our observable int is not an integer, so we need to initialize it in our constructor. So, uh, now it won't crash on me. And hopefully, Studio won't crash either because the emulator is already up. And I never called find view, but find view by ID once in my entire code base, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, so if you want to learn more about data binding, uh, I highly recommend reading Google's data binding guide. Uh, I've got lots of information on how to make ways <coughs> more complex stuff, like how you make those includes, how to use other kinds of operators in your bindings. Um, so, for example, accessing lists and maps is a little bit different. Um, how you can use resources like r.color. whatever in your bindings. Uh, value converters. So say you want to, you know that off the top of your head, every time you want to use a date, you want to use a particular format. You can create a value converter that will automatically convert all dates to that specific format without having to do that explicitly every time. Uh, how to bind custom view properties. So one of the examples that they actually use in this guide is how uh, you might use Picasso to uh, bind uh, an image to an image view and have Picasso load that in the background without uh, actually using the cost of your binding at all. Um, and then more ways to make your data observable, so you can find that the observable int um, and then its counterparts, observable float, observable boolean, observable string. You find that those are too restrictive and you want to do something more complex in your two-way bindings, um, they've got you covered in this guide. And that is all I have. So um, what it's doing is it's got some map bindings, which I can do here. Um, I think that's actually part of the binding in my class. So probably if I had to guess, it's probably using find, uh, binding by ID, but I don't know the answer to that. Um, one question that someone asked the last time I gave this presentation was uh, whether you can use animations with this or not. Um, the short answer is I don't know. 
Uh, the long answer is I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, you can always use a property animator to animate the properties of your data itself. Um, it's kind of a hacky way to do it, um, and if you want certain animations that might not work for you, um, but you can always still call find view by ID and get that view and work on it directly if you want to do something fancy. You don't have to use just data binding or just find view ID. So, with all the stuff it's doing in the background, is it hard to troubleshoot? No. Um, I, and it's going to get better, I assume. I assume. I can't promise it's going to get better, but um, right now it actually gives you pretty good information in your logcat. Um, if it fails at compile time, it'll say, I couldn't find a way to bind this field to this um, data type or something like that. Um, and if it fails at uh, runtime, then it's your typical, typical you know, null pointer exception. It usually gives you pretty good indicators to where that is. Um, so it looks like, like the IntelliSense and like the XML and stuff isn't it's really not. Um, okay. That's one of the things that I'd imagine that if Google sees uh, data binding kind of take hold, um, it'll get better. But right now, there really isn't any IntelliSense at all in here. So you just have to type all the way. Yeah. And if um, you type it wrong, you'll get a compiler. Yeah. But generally, you shouldn't be doing too much typing, I guess, in your bindings. So you should be able to fairly easily figure out what you're trying to do in here. I, I would say that if you're finding that Intellis that you want IntelliSense in here, you're probably doing too much. I mean, obviously, it'll help anywhere. Even like importing the class I, and I, I, the data. That, 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 that is one area where I had some trouble with because Android WW, just for some reason, I always want to put comma in front. Cool. Well, thank you. I'll uh, throw that survey link back up there. What's the link?